Hi everyone, welcome back to Chop's Garage. Well, I think it was my video before last, you saw me going to the main dealers, trying out several cars that were park exchanged in and seeing if we could get a deal together on them or not. So there was the Honda Civic. Well, obviously, spoiler alert, we bought them. <laughs> we actually did a deal on all three of them. So we got the Honda Civic, which was, uh, what was that? 90,000-ish miles with a 2.2 .2 diesel in it. That was the EX. And there was the 2012. There was the 2013 Peugeot 1.6 HDI. I forget what spec that was. It is a high spec one, isn't it? It's got the sports interior and the alloys and all that with 70 odd thousand miles on it that needs the sat nav sorting out from the comments that you guys have made people think someone's replaced the head unit with another one from a peugeot but one that's not compatible with the sat nav looking online there's a few companies that look like they do sort of a, a reflash or something which we'll need to look into but that one we got hold of as well and the last one we got was the little igila which was a 2010 with just 17,000 miles on it. So we did a deal on all three because I thought all three were fairly good stock. You know, we've got the first time car or the little runabout. We've got the sort of family wagon and then we've got the, the commuter. I guess I'd kind of call the uh, the Honda the commuter car. <clears throat> bigger, being di bigger diesel, it needs good runs, doesn't it, really, to keep it clear. So yeah, we did a deal on all three of them, but what we didn't do is we didn't have a chance to sort of have a drive of them well, other than the short drive. And some of these cars, I've not had the uh, Honda uh, Civic before. I've not had the 308 before. So what we can do is just go for a quick spin because obviously now we get to find out why they were really part exchanged. So we do the best we can when we look at these cars. As you saw in my last video, I walk around them, I check the body workout, I check the tyres out, I take them for a short drive, make sure it goes through the gears, make sure the clutch is okay. I check the coolant levels, I check the oil levels. I try and leave them running while I'm doing my little videos to you. I leave them running all the time to see if there's any overheating problems. But obviously we're only out for about 10 minutes or so. We don't get a chance to have a proper drive. Now those of you that watch the channel regularly know that what I do with the cars before I put them up for retail is I take them home and back, which is in, in normally ends up being a 40 minute to an hour, depending on how, what traffic's like and whether I've got to do other odds and sod stops on the way. And that's when we really get to find out what's wrong with them. Also with the diesels, proper cold starts. The engines all felt cold when I went to start them at the dealership, but you never really know. So we're going to get a chance to do full cold starts and go for a longer drive and see what we've really bought. Um, because it's all now about working out what all the reconditioning is going to cost. It's all well and good getting them at the right price, but the right price only depends on if you don't have to throw a load of money at recon. But before we get into that, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video athletic greens ag1 by athletic greens is a daily nutritional drink delivered to your door benefits of the ag1 is it promotes your gut health it supports your immunity it boosts your energy and helps recovery which is a big thing for me with my training sessions there's 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients in one serving all you need to do is add one scoop and 250 ml of water there's a range of subscriptions that deliver to your door monthly that you can pause or cancel at any time. This starter kit comes with a 30 day supply pouch, a shaker and a premium storage container. But if you're out and about on the go all the time, you can also get a month's supply in single portion sachets. Just give it a shake to blend it all together. It's best to have this in the morning on an empty stomach. I'm having it in the mornings before I go to the gym and replacing the sugary uh, pre-workout drinks I was having before with this and finding it highly effective and giving me all the energy I need to do my morning workout. So like I said, I'm having it before my workouts in the morning. I was having sugary pre-workout drinks before. I'm finding this is going down really smoothly. Tastes great and unlike a lot of the health drinks and the whey protein drinks and those kind of things are upsetting my throat, this goes down no problem at all. and I'm having plenty of energy to do my workouts in the morning. Now, it wouldn't be Chops Garage if we hadn't got a special offer from the guys for you. So with your first order, Athletic Greens are going to give you five free travel pouches and a year's supply of the D3 and K2 liquid food supplement. These are the vitamins that help with the absorption of calcium and transfer of it to your bones. Also helps with your heart health. There's a year's supply there. Just a little dropper. Just comes in a little dropper format. One little drop of that each day. Now, to get this offer, there is a link in the description down below. So a big thank you to Athletic Greens for the special offer. 
for helping me recover from my Christmas indulgences and for being a sponsor of Chop's Garage. Sell out in the Honda. Bit of a spoiler alert. I have driven this home and back already. And I have to say, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. First time I've driven one of these with a 2.2 diesel in it. It's got proper punch. And I think the thing that surprises me the most is how well it handles. Let's move the uh, locking wheel nuts rocking around in the cup holder there, making a racket. Yeah, so what really impresses me is how well it handles. I haven't driven a Civic Type R of this year, but obviously that must take it up a level and it must be incredible because this really impresses me. It just stays flat, there's no real body roll, it grips well. I'd say, to be honest, in some of the corners it feels on par with the Suzuki Swift, but with a lot more grunt. I've had no knocks or bangs out of the suspension. Obviously I've been able to get it fully up temperature and start it from stone cold, which is the big thing with the diesels, isn't it? And um, I cannot find a fault with it. Now obviously when it goes in for the MOT, it could be a different matter. I've not looked underneath the car and done some of the tests they'll do, but I can't imagine it's going to need a lot. I mean, the punch on it, it really does go. And what also surprises me as well is its willingness to rev for a diesel. It's really quite w willing to sort of rev. Normally, you know, two and a half thousand, it's all done and dusted, move on. This will pull through to like four, you know, quite comfortably. And it doesn't even sound that diesel when it does it. It doesn't have that sort of real clatteriness to it. Bear in mind it's done 92,000, so one would think if it was going to, it would. And was the bumps okay? I was worried with the suspension looking like there wasn't a lot of travel, because there isn't an awful lot of gap between the wheel and the wheel arch. It looked, it's fairly low car. I thought it would ride horrible, but it doesn't. I'm really impressed with it. Some of you said in the comments, that it's a quick car, um, presumably from having owned them yourself. And I have to agree, I mean, we're at 1500 revs now in sixth gear, doing a national speed limit, but if I put my foot down, it's ready to go. It may well be one of the most perfect combos of daily commuter that gives you decent miles to the gallon, but you can still have a bit of fun in it. Get all the family in the weekends, but when you're on your own, get a bit of a hoon now on the go. And let's say you still get decent miles to the gallon. What did it say out there? I think it was saying 48 to the average. I've brought that down a bit since I've been driving it, but, <laughs> but it just makes progress really quite quickly with no drama. I'm still in sixth gear, I've not had to change out of sixth yet. I've got to slow down a bit really creeps up on you how quickly you can get going in it. Very impressed, obviously I've got my heated seat on so I'm nice and comfy. I've got my sat nav. Really, really nice car. So this one seems to be a win as far as I'm concerned. Get it down, get the MOT done on it. Doesn't need a service, it's got a stamp from uh, I think the 7th of last year. So it doesn't need an MOT service yet. Like I say, the MOT is nearly six months, but we'll put a new MOT on it anyway. Yeah, we've got some bad potholes along here. It doesn't ride badly on them at all, really. You never know, this could be one of the most rarest things in retail. One of those cars that is over five years old that you just need to give a really good valet to. Famous last words, I know, guys. It's funny because the general public would like to believe that's the case with all the vehicles the dealers get in. They just throw a bucket over them and make a fortune out of them. But it's so rare to get a car that really just needs a good valet. I have, of course, completely jinxed myself now saying that, haven't I? So Civic seems all good. Let's go for a longer run in the Persian and see what we think of that. Right, starters. 
dead cold start. Let's see what we think of that. Hmm, starts on the bottom. It's been sitting for well over a day now, so that's encouraging. Let's see how she drives. Well, you can certainly feel a peppy little turbo kick in. It uh, kicks in very low down the rev range and gives plenty of punch. Obviously with the turbos what you're looking for is you want to give it some good boost and see if you've got any uh, loss of pressure, any engine management lights coming on for loss of pressure, anything like that. Which we don't run these people over. Yeah, turbo kicks in nicely, gives it a nice punch. Right, let's get a chance to give a go and see if the uh, suspension's all good. it gets up to speed nicely enough. Already up to the national speed limit. Gearbox is fine, let's go through the gears nicely, we've got a six speed box. I'll tell you what, even in six, we've got a good bit of acceleration still happening there. Don't seem to have any clocks or bangs from the suspension. Yeah, Rep seems to ride okay. So what I'll do now is drive it on for another sort of 20 minutes or so by, and then turn around and come back by the time I've done that. I'll take it home tonight and back as well, just to double check everything is okay on it. But initial signs are I didn't miss anything in my first test drive. Bit of a clearer road now, a chance to stretch his legs out a little bit more. So there's nothing higher up the rev range, it's a problem. It's telling me I'm low on fuel there. Worrying beep as soon as you start accelerating hard, but it's just saying I'm low on fuel. I was worried those bigger alloys would make it quite really quite harsh, but it's actually not too bad at all. Seems very composed with the corners. I said it feels genuinely nippy actually. I know I thought the uh, Civic was quick, but this actually still feels nippy back to back with it. That's in sixth gear as well. I just thought perhaps I'd left it in fourth, but it's in sixth. I guess it's a, a small car with all that diesel torque. It's going to feel fairly nippy, isn't it? So yeah, initial signs are that. So yeah, Persia seems all right. No obvious reasons for part exchange with this one, other than possibly the whole sat nav thing. It's whether I throw money into getting the stereo checked out and then find it's the screen because it's not cheap to get the stereo done. I think it was 200, 250 quid. One of the symptoms was a blank screen on your sat nav, but I guess it's entirely possible the screen could go as well. Well, two out of three seem okay so far, so let's take the last one out. The little Igila. See what we think of that. Or that wind. Right, so in the little Igila, started out absolutely fine. It was, I did witter away to about it starting up, but I realized I hadn't hit record. Um, it's idling nicely, bang on, didn't have any problems starting, it's got a strange smell to it, it's not damp, it's, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but there is a little bit of condensation on the screen, so we just need to get that cleared before we head off. So, screen cleared, we're out in Nikila. Now, I wasn't particularly nice about this when we last saw it on the channel, was I? It said it was just an Aguila and it was slow. 
Having done a few more miles on it now, I have to say it's no worse than the other 1.2. In fact, I'd actually say my most of them give it a little bit and they're a bit of fun. You see it goes through the corners well there. I, in fact, I'd say it drives better than the last 1.2 Corsa I drove, which felt super slow. In fact, every 1.2 Corsa I've driven feels super slow. I don't know if these are a bit lighter, but it actually, you know, get it on the boil and it actually feels quite nippy. We're stuck behind the mat now, though, aren't we? But yeah, temperature stayed okay. The clutch is a bit high, but it does have a receipt for a clutch. And these are manually adjusted on a cable. So I wonder if it just needs a bit of adjustment on the cable because it's certainly not slipping or getting smelling or anything like that. Um, and the receiver, like I said, I think was from just a year or so ago. So it um, probably just needs a bit of a tweak adjustment wise. You don't notice it so much when you're driving normally, it's just when you set off from a standstill. The gearbox is all good. No crunching or anything there. I mean, obviously, we've only got 17,000 miles on it, but that doesn't mean things can't go wrong still. I say the engine seems strong, I guess, again, with that mileage, it's got all of its compression. It should be pretty much near factory figures for horsepower wise. I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a hill here, fourth gear. It's still pulling up here. My surprise is quite, like I said, it's quite light on its feet through the corners. Suspension is all good, there's been no knocks or bangs, brakes in a straight line, brakes well, no squealing, anything like that. So, all the signs are that. Um, may well be three out of three of decent motors. Obviously, the caveat to that is they haven't been down for MOT yet. So we never know what could happen when it goes down for the MOT. We could have emission issues on one of any of the cars. I could have missed a broken spring, you never know. Sometimes they aren't that obvious to spot. We could have a, a rotten exhaust system, although none of them seem to be blowing. Obviously, even things like tires, they can get expensive. So, um, yeah, next thing to do is get them in for their MOTs, see where we stand on them after that. Then they can get, you know, once we know it's worth spending a bit more time on them, we'll get them all balloted up, get them all for sale. It's very tempting to offer them out as trade sales because I think they'd all go out to various people quite easily, trade sales wise. I've got people in mind for each of them. But I actually think they're all good retail stock for me. I think they'll all do well. I haven't got a lot of stock at the moment going into the new year. So it's worth me, worth me doing all of them. So the Honda and the Peugeot are dropped down for MOT with more. As soon as they're back, we'll swap it over the gear. Let's see how we get on with that. You're going to see that in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed. Check below if you are or not, because you'll want to get a notification when the next video comes in to see how we got on with those. Don't forget, if you want to get your nutrition back on track again, we've got that link for AG1 by Athletic Greens in the description down below. So go check it out. As always, massive thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.